Hi everyone and welcome to Home Reno Collectibles where today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Generations Deluxe Class Titans Return, Fracas and Scourge. So Fracas is the head because this is actually a new line of essentially headmasters. So I really like how we got Combiner Wars and we got a bunch of Combiners and then they did all the repaints and everything and that was pretty cool uh, and all the little retools and stuff just like they did with a lot of the G2 figures and stuff. Now we have Headmasters coming back in a really new way. Now a lot of these characters were not actually headmasters back in those days it's just really nice though uh, that they are including a lot of these characters and just giving them a nice new twist and stuff and just having that functionality so all of the deluxe class heads obviously interchangeable all the you know it basically each scale of head is, is interchangeable with each other which is pretty damn cool so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the box here as you can see you've got the heads and they work with the different size stuff which is really cool and then you can see that the actual, uh, the little robot guy there, Frackers, can actually sit inside the vehicle and everything as well, which is very cool as well. You have a little bio right there and stuff too, so let's go ahead and get this thing open and take a closer look. And here we have Scourge in the vehicle mode, and I actually really, really do dig this. Now, I definitely like this a hell of a lot more than the Universe one. I don't actually have that figure. I did want it a while ago, but then obviously I saw this, and I thought there's no way I'm ever going to go ahead and get that thing. There's no point. This thing is like a perfect G1 Scourge. It looks fantastic, and in this mode, I really, really do like the color scheme. I actually think that the Takara ones have pretty much made what we want, and then have said to Hasbro, uh, yeah, you can't do any of this crap, so yeah, you go ahead and make your uh, inferior color schemes and make everyone buy it. So, these are cheaper than the Takara ones, obviously, just because you can get them in whatever country that you are in. And if you can't get the Takara ones in whatever country you're in, it's because they're imported and they're going to be more expensive. So, it's really up to you. Do you want to buy a worse paint job or do you want to spend a little bit more money and get a better paint job that's more accurate to G1 or to comic books or whatever? Uh, but I definitely think that these will suffice. For me, for my blur, I'm definitely going to go ahead and paint that up because I do prefer the Takara version, but I don't want to pay more money to have that. Before we take a look at the accessories that this figure comes with, here he is next to uh, the G1 Optimus Prime, so you can see scale-wise pretty much the same from the front to back right there. And there you can see the height and everything and width, so pretty much uh, about your G1 Optimus Prime sort of size. I'm actually going to be using that Prime for pretty much all Transformers comparisons from now on as well, so that everything you can see compared next to the same figure. So, accessories that this guy comes with. Obviously, he comes with Fracas, who is currently sitting inside right now. So, you can go ahead and flick this little bit up right here. It's a bit stiff on mine. And he's sitting inside there. Now, you can actually see him inside, which is pretty sweet. Uh, there's no like kind of you know control panels or anything in there, but he does fit nice and snug It is a bit hard to get him in there snug to be honest with you You have to get his legs between those two little panels inside there You have some nice detailing where he's gonna sit honestly, but no actual like computers or anything for him to use uh, But once you actually get his legs uh, in between those he you know is nice nice snug fit He will just fit loose in there if you want to but it kind of rattles around so just try and get him centered in there really nice And it'll fit beautifully so, Frackers himself, the legs are together, and so they'll just move in unison. So he has like a knee joint and a hip joint, and the head can turn because that is essentially the ball joint for the actual Scourge head, which is just on his back, and then you've just got the arms on the side right there that go up and down. So, not much articulation, but it is a bit more than uh, the original Headmasters, so that's pretty sweet. And we do actually get some detail in there, some red and some silver some different blue right there, so that's pretty cool. You can actually have this interact with this guy because the uh, the weapon right here, which looks a lot like a kind of Combiner Wars sort of gun, um, he can actually sit inside this. If we go ahead and move his arms up right there, he can sit right there and operate that. So you can pretend he's like flying around or something, but there is actually a peg on here. So you can have him actually operating a turret on Scourge himself which actually doesn't look all that bad, that actually looks okay. And uh, obviously, you would be able to do it in the uh, robot mode, but obviously he is Scourge's head, so if you have another head that you can use, either to sit inside here, or to go on your figure, then obviously you can have one in the gun, and one actually being the head for your figure, being the Titan Master. Go ahead and transform this guy, first up with Fracas, you just put the arms down, fold the legs up and then there you go, you've got the Scourge head right there. Over here we simply take this piece off, so as you can see this piece 
would become the head part to scourge uh, which it's kind of annoying that you're essentially parts forming but you know never mind really it gives you a pistol for robot modes so that's pretty cool so you've got the pistol and then you've got these like double barrel cannon kind of thing so first up what we're going to do is open up these panels they tab in there and there and we can flip them up out of the way and then these pieces right here are going to untab from one another and come down then we rotate right here and collapse inwards like so until it clicks and they cover the leg panels feet come down heel spurs come out then from here all we have to do is just rotate these arms down flip the fists out just like so you can do whatever you want with this backpack if you don't want the silhouette of it there leave it like that or if you want the more kind of g1 accurate looking sort of cape or wings or whatever you can do whatever you want with it but i like to just have it straight out like so you go ahead and take your head and simply pop it in place right there fits in nice and snug mine's a little bit loose on there it rattles around in certain places but you get it turned and it will stay looking pretty much where you want it and there you go there you have the transformed scourge in uh, robot mode which i think actually looks really cool now overall this guy looks pretty fantastic and I do really love the blue that they've used. It has a sort of metallic sort of look to it. We have the really nice Decepticon logo on the chest there. The head is absolutely fantastic. Perhaps would have liked the moustache to be painted but it looks pretty good as it is. Uh, we have these bits which actually look like stickers but they are actually printed right there. And same down here. They look like stickers but they are actually printed pieces. So you have that kind of G1-esque sort of look and feel, but at the same time you've got new engineering, way better articulation. So I really do dig these things. And obviously, again, like I said, you do have this cannon if you want to use it. And if you don't, you do still have that peg over here, and then you've got a peg right here, so you can go ahead and store them on the back if you wish. And in a size comparison, here he is next to G1 Prime, so uh, a pretty good size there as well. Now as for the articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so it looks left and right, up and down, pivot side to side a little bit. As you can see there, it does kind of wiggle around a little on mine. Shoulders, I really like. You've got that hinge there from transformation. You've also got the hinge going out, and it can rotate all the way around. And it can pivot in and out because it's on a ball joint there. So really good articulation in those shoulders. Rotation of the upper part of the arm, single jointed elbow. So the wrist just swivels in and out. We do get that cavity there, but it doesn't really matter too much. Nothing at the waist. And then down here at the hips, they move forward and back, out to the side, rotation right there, single jointed knee, and then you have a bit of foot articulation right there as well. So really, really nice posability with this guy too. Nonetheless, I love the mold, and I definitely do recommend these figures. So stay tuned for tomorrow, where I'm going to be taking a look at Blur. So thanks for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you want to see more like this, go ahead and subscribe. And let me know what Transformers videos you want to see. I actually have a couple of third-party things coming up. i still got to finish my Warbatron combiner off and do the Fierce Attack. And uh, I also have the Combiner Wars Bruticus also to finish off too. But I have a bunch of, like, original Michael Bay movie figures. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and let let me know what Transformers stuff you might want to see, and if I have them, I'll do them for you. And if you want to see pictures of anything else from my collection, check out my Instagram, it's hermino 123 and the link is in the description below. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.